Hey, 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 how are you doing, Patrick? How's it going? Oh, fine. And you? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, we've been doing these little webinar series for a little while now. I had uh, I had Mark Westgard on from WS Form over the last six weeks or so. We had a little pause because we had to go to Athens, where I met Patrick, only briefly, though, in the corridor, ever so quickly. <laughs> um, but we've uh, we finished that series, and so now we're moving on to a completely new topic, nothing to do with forms. This is genuinely interesting. If you are kind of nerdy about site speed and all of that, this is going to be really curious uh, to you because it's a completely different approach to having your website online. Patrick has a plugin which has both a free and a pro version. I'm sure towards the end, we'll get a bit of time looking at all of those bit different pieces, but it's called Simply Static. Um, you can find that if you probably Google Simply Static or go to just simplystatic.com, you can see what it's all about. But he's going to spend the next four weeks. Well, that's not entirely true, I don't think. I think we've got a little bit of a break for a week somewhere in between, but four weeks is what we've got planned. Uh, today, Patrick's going to be talking to us about how you can get your static website deployed uh, using GitHub um, and where that will end up. Then on the second week, we're going to look at how forms work, because of course, if your site has been flattened, then, uh, hmm, you know, how do forms work? Then we'll do about static site searching, how you can make your, make your site have a functional search facility. And then on the last episode, how to export multilingual websites with Simply Static as well. Just a couple of bits and pieces. If you've got any questions or comments, please just leave them. The best place to be if you want to leave comments, without a doubt, because it's the it's the most likely that we'll see them, is wpbuilds.com forward slash live. You will need to be logged into some kind of Google account because it's YouTube comments that we post there. So just make sure you're logged into that and you can leave a comment. Feel free to do that. Um, if you are in our Facebook group and you're watching this, though, you've got to go through a little bit of a contrivance to get your name and avatar seen. Otherwise, you're just anonymized. You have to go to wave.video forward slash lives forward slash Facebook and just click accept or confirm or whatever it is that it says. And yeah, if you are fans, if you're into this and you think somebody else might enjoy this, why not send your friends there? wpbuilds.com forward slash live. Okay. Patrick, tell us a little bit about yourself. This is the only time I'm going to do this. We won't start each week with this, but tell us a little bit about yourself and WordPress and how you come to get involved in making plugins and all that stuff. Yeah, sure. So I'm into the WordPress world for about like 10 years now. Um, started working professionally with WordPress for about, I think it's eight years now. Um, I originally heard the first time about WordPress in university. We had a little course where we had like um, an introduction to content management and con content management systems and one system we took a closer look at was WordPress. So uh, we fiddled around with it. We built a pretty um, easy theme and even a tiny little plugin uh, back in the day. And yeah, that pretty much hooked me on WordPress. So I've gone from all the way from uh, being employed at an agency, running my own agency, uh, switched the job to be a senior developer at a, a plugin company who specialized in WooCommerce plugins. And for about three years now, I'm running my own product business full time. And yeah, so I have a couple of nerdy products. I mean, Simply Static is also nerdy, but that's quite nerdy. my entire <laughs> plugin setup is kind of nerdy. Uh, if you want to check it out, it's patrickposner.dev. Um, the TLD will already show you that it's like a nerdy kind of setup. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm developing Simply Static now for a couple of years and um, actively maintain it, extend it, and pretty much talking to everyone who, who wants to hear it about Static WordPress and yeah. what you can do with it and what you can't do with Static WordPress websites. And yeah, today we 
get well, a quick intro well uh, yeah a little quick more introduction. or less quick introduction in this whole that's the best way to think about it isn't practice. it really we're just it's a bit, bit of a primer this webinar series we're not trying to give every single detail it's just here it is this is the kind of thing it can do patrick just i'm just curious i can see you've got a really nice mic there but i've got a feeling you're not using it so um just go into the oh. settings the little cogwheel on the platform and click the audio icon and make sure you've got whatever mic that is. I think you've got a Shure MV7. Um, and I've got a feeling it's... Hello, not... hello, hello. I... You are absolutely right. It was now a... you sound like a million dollars. Pots. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm you bad. sounded like you were on like a, a little, I don't know, maybe the Mac, um, the Mac mic or something. But now that you just say a few words, we'll just check that's going. Hello, hello. Oh, yeah. oh, What's up today? Oh, we now yes. have a serious microphone. Now you sound like the business. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to turn you up a bit because I had to turn you down a little bit because of the background noise. Okay, great. So there's a nice introduction uh, to Patrick. You now know that he's a nerd and he's got various <laughs> WordPress nerdy products. We're going to talk about static sites. I guess we should kick this off just Tell us what a static site is. Obviously, everybody knows that WordPress needs some kind of hosting of some kind or another, but this is not like that, is it? This is a really different way of getting your WordPress website online. Could you just, from a thousand mile view, yeah. before we share your screen, just tell us what static sites are. So the basic idea of running a static WordPress website is that you create your WordPress website the same way you are used to. So you use your plugins, you use your favorite theme, and bring everything together. Um, but the next step is different. So you basically convert your WordPress website to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and your images, and you have like a flattened setup. It's just HTML. There's no dynamic PHP processing, no dynamic templating. Um, it's just HTML. It looks like it looks, and it will not change if you're like, Modify the title, for example, for your homepage or so. Um, yeah. Why do we do that? It's basically because of performance. So static sites are pretty fast. Um, static sites are insanely secure, especially if you have uh, catched up with the latest news about some vulnerability reports that are coming up uh, for the past two weeks or so. Yeah. Um, you will... You want to have a, take a closer look into this whole static site setup thing. And the third thing, or yeah, so the third thing is uh, maintenance. So if you separate your traditional WordPress website and your static website, the static website is a website your visitors actually visit and interact with. Um, you don't have to worry about keeping your plugins up to date, keeping WordPress up to date, and so on. You just freeze your website in time and it remain unchanged as long as you export uh, don't export a new static uh, version of your current WordPress website. Yeah. So I played with this quite extensively a little while ago and found it to be really compelling. And the, the way that I did it, which I think explains it best of all, is if you have ever installed a local WordPress website, so there's a piece of software called Local. I believe it's possibly run by WP Engine now. I'm not sure who is yeah. the custodian of that software. Okay. Well, you can download that onto your Mac or your PC or your Linux box, and then you can create a WordPress website, which is on your computer at home. Now, clearly, nobody's got access to that from the wide internet, but you can then deploy it. Well, that's what we're going to learn a little bit about today, deploying it via GitHub, say. And then you can just turn your computer off so that the WordPress has gone. It, it's no longer there. It doesn't matter how much you try, you can't get to WordPress because your computer switched off. But the website still exists. And it sounds like voodoo, but it's not. It's actually very smart, very clever, and the technology is brilliant. So, Patrick, shall I share the screen? Are we ready to kick yeah. off about GitHub and how all this works? So I'll kind of duck out. If I've got any questions, I'll interrupt, but uh, thanks. Perfectly fine. So let's get a bit into this whole how is WordPress and static different or um, how you can quickly check um, what is a static website and what's your WordPress website? And I also want to give like a little introduction in what we're actually building uh, during our four-part season session um, where we talk about static websites. So I prepared a little website that I'd like to show you. Um, 
Thank you. <laughs> it's a photography website um, nice. because it, there is some kind of uh, I I don't know who spread it spreads it, but uh, you can for sure use like galleries, images, and so on on your static website. They work perfectly fine. There's nothing you have to worry about. They just work. So here's the basic WordPress website. It's a photographer website. I used Oli WP. Um, a full set editing theme that you can download from GitHub for free. Just saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have like the homepage with a little teaser image, and we have a little, little nice gallery here, and we have some <clears throat> some nice little comments about his work and trusted partners and so on. We also have a little blog who the guy shares a little bit about his best photo spots and how you can find them and leverage them and so on. We also have a contact form, uh, which we get into all the details in the next session, but I will take some time to explain how it works um, in a minute. Okay. And we have a little search that you can use. So if you type something here, you will notice there are search results here. And the search, we talk about it in the third episode of our live stream, um, works completely without any server-side interaction. So all that is done from your browser without any um, server-side interaction. So yes. if you have set up Simply Static, you will notice there's a little um, link here in your top admin bar uh, where you can view your static URL. If you open that, I just opened it in a new tab now, you will notice that that one looks quite familiar. The only difference is this is your static website. And you will notice that the uh, dark little admin bar from WordPress is gone. So that one here is completely static. It looks absolutely the same as the WordPress website, but it's static. It's hosted on Netlify. And that's what we're building within the next couple of weeks. Um, there is a little thing I have temporarily deactivated because we uh, will talk about that in the last session. It's multilingual. Here is a little um, language toggle, you know, from WPML to switch languages. So I have some parts of the website already translated and we get into it in the last uh, episode of our little live stream show here. Okay. So... Yeah, that's a static website. As you can see, it looks completely the same. It's not like a pretty old HTML website. You got all your styles, all the interactivity you need, um, all the images, and it's like super fast. So now we get back into Simply Static. Um, let's quickly head back to the back end. Um, one thing I like to show you first is plugins. So we have a couple of plugins installed. Um, most of them are free. WPML is not, Simply Static Pro is not, but um, you get the idea. We have a little SEO plugin. In that case, I used Yoast SEO um, to cover things like meta descriptions and an XML sitemap. Um, so just basic things you need for your website. We have right. also Contact Form 7 so that you have some kind of contact form solution so people can get in touch with you. We have a little light box that's uh, handling the images on the front page we've seen already. And we have Simply Static. Um, once we get to the multilingual part, we also will activate uh, WPML plus uh, a couple of add-ons to make everything like fit on your multilingual static website. Okay. So let's have a look into the pretty nerdy part of the live stream. So simply <laughs> static settings. Um, today, I don't want to cover everything uh, within the settings panel of simply static because there's a lot you can do with it. Um, we just cover the basics so we can or we're making progress towards our goal to deploy our static website today. And we okay. get into all the details and, and more uh, within the other, uh, within the next weeks of our live session. So what you need to know to get started. We should start with simply static general. General means it's like basic options you want to configure before starting a static export 
Um, why? Because it depends a little bit on your actual use case. Do you want to export it to a static hosting provider? Do you want to just download a zip file, for example? So if you change the little select menu here, replacing URLs to offline usage, you will notice that there are no additional settings. Um, what Simply Static will do in that case is um, rewriting all the URLs to a local path so you can simply extract the zip file and check it out on your desktop without any server involved. That's not what we're doing today, but I wanted to mention why there are different options. There's also a relative path, which can be handy for certain setups, especially if you want to um, host your static website in a subdirectory. But right. I would recommend absolute URLs. Why? Well, there's one part that uh, you should have, or you should keep in mind, that is SEO. Um, if you use a relative path, it works perfectly fine. You, you get all your meta description and all that stuff. But one thing is a little bit tricky, and that is the canonical URL. Right. So you can Google that. It's basically um, there to prevent duplicate content. And it's important. And even if you not completely understand it, it's absolutely fine. Just use absolute URLs, and you absolutely are covered for anything coming regarding SEO. Nice. So then we have includes. Um, Simply Static works a little bit or a lot like Google. So it starts from the homepage and it collects all the links that it can find and downloads the um, HTML version of it. If you have a page that isn't linked somewhere, in my example, um, it's a thank you page we, where we will redirect the user after he submitted the contact form. Um, there are a lot of different use cases where you want to include some URLs, be it like an additional landing page that isn't linked somewhere or so. Um, then you include it here. The same um, is true for additional files. Let's say you have like a specific zip file you want to include on your static website, but it isn't linked behind a, like a download button or anything. Right. So, but you want to make sure that this file exists on your static website, then include it here in additional directories. To help you with that, we have this little copy home path because I know people have absolutely no idea how uh, the home yeah. path looks <laughs> yeah. like. Right. I mean, yeah. me neither. So, absolutely <laughs> fine. That's why there's a little button here copy home path. You can copy that, paste it, and you get your relative path to a WordPress installation. So all you have to do is, let's say it's located in WP content, uploads, my awesome file.zip. Oh, yeah. That's all you have to do. <laughs> so easy enough. <laughs> yeah. um, you can also exclude certain uh, URLs from your static website export. Um, we already include some um, URLs that are usually included because WordPress, uh, you have this little, back in the day you had widgets, now it's like blocks, but you have this little log into your website widget, for example, uh, on your website, and you absolutely, I mean, it wouldn't work either, but you want don't want to include like, WP login on your static website because it wouldn't work and it's like completely useless there. That's why we um, set that as a default setting. We also exclude WP JSON. WP JSON is related to the WordPress REST API. Basically, yep. each post and page we have on your website has a WP JSON pendant um, that is loaded from a specific header tag. And we automatically exclude it because you don't need any REST API whatsoever on your static website. So that's pretty much all needed in terms of basic configuration for your static website. If you have that set up, um, you're good to go to run your first static export. By default, Simply Static will always use the zip um, method to export, but that's not what we want to do today. We want to be extra nerdy. We use GitHub and Netlify to completely automate this whole publishing process. Nice. So before we get into all the um, settings we need to 
um, we need to configure to make that work. Um, let's quickly talk about GitHub. GitHub is usually something used by programmers to kind of version their code. Um, and I can assure you, for using that setup, you don't have to know anything about GitHub. The only thing you have to do is create a free account. Um, you don't even need to like set up repositories or even know what all GitHub is about. Um, but once we run our export, you will quickly notice why it's pretty beneficial to have a little GitHub account, a free account, um, and to automate that because you have like a pretty decent way to roll back all the version updates you ever you will ever make in your static website journey. So the only thing we need to get started is a personal access token. I quickly show you the deployment settings. So if you go to simply static settings, deployment, you have a little, uh, an entire list of different export methods available to you. In our case, we were using GitHub. So you can use whatever you want, but I just, just a little, uh, word of caution here. If you're not a developer, I wouldn't suggest using something like Amazon AWS S3, for example. It mm -hmm. works, it's cheap, but you have to do everything on your own. Redirect. You have to set like a domain on yourself. Um, you have to set up like caching, everything on your own. And no one is here to help you. So, I mean, sure, support is uh, available to help you, but we can only provide like okay, you have to configure that one and that one and that one, but we can't configure everything for you. So GitHub is really one of the user-friendliest ways to get started. And you also feel kind of nerdy, even if you don't oh, have yes. like, the technical knowledge behind it. And it's yeah. absolutely not needed. So choose GitHub and you get this uh, settings box down below here. Um, so in our case, there are different account types in GitHub. 99% uh, of the time, you have just a personal account. If you're a big company, sure, choose organization. The settings, if I change that, you will notice that the settings um, adjust according to the um, account type you have chosen. But in our case, personal is perfectly fine. Um, you have to add your username. The username is displayed here, right below your name. Um, and it's automatically used for things like your login and if you create a repository and so on. So, yeah, add your username, your account email address, your personal access token. That's what we're doing in just a second. The name of your repository. Um, what is a repository? A repository is basically, you can imagine it like a folder on your computer. Yeah. It's basically just a flat storage where files, where you can put in files, they get uploaded, and they are just there to uh, get further used from other tools we are covering later. Um, make sure it's unique in some kind, um, but the integration will let you know. If you type something like one, two, three, um, and you hit save settings, simply static will let you know that that isn't a possible name. Make sure to use low i mean you can you don't have to use just lowercase but it's like good practice to use Everybody lower cases yeah, yeah, yeah. and use dashes to combine multiple words or fragments of words together um we also have visibility um it's default to private um because no one actually needs to see your repository on your github account if you don't want to um because Netlify and all the other deployment providers can handle private repositories without any issues. So there's really no need to offer a free look into your static website. Right, yeah, 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 everybody. If there's <laughs> ever a reason to do that, perfectly fine. You can just set it to public. Um, we also set a branch. Um, branch sounds kind of technical. Um, and it is kind of technical, but you don't have to worry. You can, in 99% of the cases, you can just use the default, the main branch, and you're good to go. It's more like in a more complex setup, you would be able to export to different branch, compare them and merge them together. Um, but for 
we're building a static site because we want to make something simple and not like a yeah. huge yeah. organization <laughs> structure with all different kinds of deployments. So keep it simple, use the main rod, and you're good to go. There's also an option for an additional webhook. It's more target, uh, targeted to developers who like to notify external services the moment the deployment has finished. Nothing you have to care about right now. So we have almost everything in place. All we need is a person, personal access token. And that's what we're again generating right now. So in your account, go to your little profile icon at the right top. Go to settings. And you get a whole lot of settings fields. None of them are really important for us right now. So you can scroll all the way down. And there's a little um, section here called developer settings. Click on it. And you get a little um, menu with GitHub apps, or of apps, and personal access token. All what we need is personal access token. So you can click on it. And we keep it simple. So we're using the classic token. The difference between classic tokens and fine grain tokens um, is the permission you allow simply static to modify. Um, you can really narrow it down to specific workflows and repositories and so on. But for the purpose of that tutorial here, we keep it simple and we use a classic token. So if you have clicked on classic tokens, there's a little select menu here at the top. Click on it and you can Click on Generate New Token, Classic. So we give it a name. Yeah, it's not pretty creative, but it will perfectly use <laughs> it, it is for now. It is. So <laughs> it's w builds, WP Builds Test. Um, you can set an expiration date. Uh, you can also set no expiration date. Um, it's just a security option. So if the 30 days expire, you will uh, need to log in again and create a new token and add it to the Simply Static settings. Um, but you can also set it to no expiration and you're completely fine with it. So Simply Static, eh, Simply Static GitHub will let you know that it's not good practice to have like an infinite um, and never changing uh, personal access token. So we keep it to 30 days for now. You will get a long list of permissions here. And I can absolutely not understand why there isn't a little check all checkbox, but yeah, there is we're going to do with it. <laughs> so what we need, repositories, because we write, read, and publish to a repository. Workflows is kind of optional. You don't need it. But if you ever need it, it's used for the webhook setting in Simply Static. You may just want to activate it. Um, we don't have to write any packages, delete packages. Uh, we don't have to uh, modify any administration settings. That's pretty much only needed if you have like an organization and you manage teams. Um, we do need the public keys and the repo hooks um, to notify the next service, in our case, uh, Netlify, to notify the service that the deployment is done. That's what this, um, the setting is for. Um, we don't need gist. We don't need use notifications. We need the user um, because we connect your settings from Simply Static with the GitHub um, privileges to match the privileges to. Oh God, that sounds so complex. So <laughs> no, just okay. activate the user. It's basically <laughs> there that you can connect Simply Static with GitHub. Keep it simple. So. This is kind of optional. You can theoretically delete the repository from Simply Static, but you don't have to. So optional, we just leave it there so I can show it to you later. Um, we don't need discussion, enterprise, audit log, code space, copilot. Oh, it has copilot. Space. Oh, that's interesting. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So maybe in the future, uh, we do need the privileges for copilot. Um, we don't need projects. Uh, we don't need GDP keys, and we don't need any SSH signing keys. So now that we have like checked a little, a little list of uh, funny boxes here, you can click yeah. on Generate Token, and you get your token generated. Copy that one. You can click on the little icon right here. Um, you don't have to 
store it anywhere on your computer or so. Um, just a word of course here. This will never be shown again. So if you lose the key, if you reset simply say whatsoever, just make sure you generate a new key. They are free. There is no limitation in the number of keys you can have. Um, I just wanted to mention that it's yeah. good to copy them now, add them, add them to the Simply Static settings, and you're good to go. So let's head back to the Simply Static settings. Um, what we are doing here, I have my old key here. I delete it. I add the new key. Um, we change the repository. So yeah, it was we had test, wasn't it? I think. Yeah. WP builds test. Name is completely up to you. But uh, for the purpose to keep it consistent, we name it WP builds test now. So we have everything filled out and we can save the settings. OK, so we set up our GitHub deployment. Yay. Um, before we dive into the next step, we can check this wonderful nerdy view here. If you click on activity log, it will show your last static export. You have run the uh, time it needed to finish and you get a little export log right here with all the URLs that's fetched. What we're doing right now is pretty much the most fun part of the connection. So we connected GitHub. We configured our general settings. All we need to do is click this little generate static files icon and let it run. So you don't have to stay on that page. Uh, you can go do whatever you want to do. Um, the button is disabled as long as the static export is running. And you can track it live right here. It fetched all the pages. It's indexing. That's uh, um, the search functionality we've seen um, a couple minutes ago. Um, depending on the configuration of Simply Static, the steps here might change. We will see like minification as a step and uh, additional deployment steps and so on. Yeah. But for now, it's just like we fetch the pages, we index the search results, and the next step basically is we deploy the files to GitHub. Can um, I ask you, on this step, yeah. what what is actually happening? Is it literally crawling around and following links in the way that you described? Because that's what Google does, right? Yeah. You know, the Google bot goes out, sees that there's a link to an About Us page, so goes to it. Then on the About Us page, says, any more links? Any more links? Found another one. Off we go. And that, is that what it's doing? Just finding yeah. links and following them around? Right, right, right. Yeah, right. that's ex exactly what's happening in background. So it's actually a two-step part. Um, the first job is to find all the links uh, on your website. It starts on your homepage, then it visits all the links from the navigation. If you have things like Yoast SEO uh, activated and running, it will automatically fetch your XML sitemap and oh, nice, um, nice, copies nice. all the links that also works with like all the popular SEO plugins from like Yoast SEO to Rank Math SEO to All-in-One SEO to SEO Press and so on. So we have like a huge list of compatible SEO plugins right now. And we automatically fetch all the links you have in your XML sitemap. And also if you have like sub sitemaps, let's say you have like a general XML sitemap and you have a new sitemap and a video sitemap and so on. Um, we follow all of them and copy all the links into the database. Um, there's basically one big database table um, where we add all the links we find plus the status code. So is this page available? Um, is it a redirect? Or is it maybe a 404 page? So there's some kind right, of error happening. Right. Um, and in the next step within this whole fetching process, um, we fetch all the results from the database and actually download the HTML and the attached um, CSS, JavaScript, and image files to it. Got it. Um, so that's all going on, and it looks like it's probably finished. So typically, if it's a small site, it's a few seconds. If it's a bigger site, you can expect it to be a, a, a lengthier process. Yeah. So yeah. it absolutely depends on the server and your the size of your website. The good thing is that Simply Static has like a automatic failover. Um, sounds complex, but it's pretty simple. So you. I already said you can um, close that page and come back to it later. It's because we have like a background process running all the time once you start to generate uh, generate static files export. 
and which means you can completely close your website and it will still run and finish the process. Right. Um, that also means in terms of if your website has like a downtime, so there's a server upgrade that needs to run or there's like just a downtime for a couple of minutes, Simply Static will remember the last page that was fetched successfully. And once the server's back online, um, it will continue from that exact point um, to finish the process. So it. it's perfectly fine to use Simply Static to export really large websites. Um, it will take some time, but the process will finish. Yeah, um, nice. The only thing you have to keep in mind if you have like a really big website is that WP Chrome should work. It's not necessary for smaller website because we can do the entire process within the runtime. Um, but we have, if you have like a really big website, you may want to make sure that WP Chrome is running. So Simply Static can do like a little self check that it still has to pro process some of the um, of the export or that the export itself isn't finished at all. Right. Yeah, got it. Okay, thank you. So we already committed a couple of files. Um, let's see. We're going to wait a second here. Um, let's quickly talk about why well, this export is running. I will explain more to it in a second. Let's quickly talk about Netlify. So nice. I know this whole static hosting provider thing is you probably have never heard of Netlify or Versal or Cloudflare pages or even GitHub pages. So what they offer is basically an easy way to host um, static websites. Some of them, like Netlify, also um, add a little, a couple of neat little features things like a pretty basic analytics integration or a basic way to handle forms. And um, they all come with different pricing, but the pricing itself is always a way cheaper than traditional uh, WordPress hosting. So we're talking about like, I don't know, $2 a year or so, depending on your, <laughs> on the of your website. But it's, I just want to mention, it's like completely different from what you're used to when it comes to especially premium WordPress hosting. So it's not a trap. It's not like <laughs> you're doing anything criminal. It's just cheap to host static websites. That's what they're I just doing a different thing, aren't they? Because of the nature of what they're serving up, there's less, less grunt required. So yeah. Yeah. And at the free tier on Netlify is pretty astonishing. I mean, there's a, there's a high chance that you'll be able to, unless your website, you know, if you've got a normal website, which is visited by, let's say your local community or something, there's a high chance you won't pay a penny because look at that hundred gigabytes. That's yeah. per month. Is it? Is that a month? It's, it's per month. Fair. <laughs> hundred gigabytes. It's, of it's pretty tough to uh, exceed yeah. the free tier of uh, Netlify. And even if you're about to hit the limit, um, let's look go. at that. Okay. So, <laughs> Cloudflare Pages is a direct competitor to Netlify. They offer a little bit less on features, but the pricing is just insane. So, the free version is practically unlimited websites, unlimited storage, unlimited bandwidth, and wow. you only needs a pro version if you want to run multiple static exports at the same time. Okay. So <laughs> if it's just you and you're maintaining your website, you can't go wrong with Cloudflare Pages. It's a little bit more complex to set up than Netlify. That's because we're going with Netlify this time. Okay. But it's still pretty easy and it's like forever nothing. Yeah. So, also a pretty valid option when it comes to static static hosting. You can't go wrong with free, right? <laughs> no, I mean, it is amazing that all of that is free. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just incredible. And if you do stray into uh, the uh, the more expensive tier, you're still, it's still very, 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 very cheap. I mean, it's still for <laughs> unlimited sites, right? Yeah, yeah. Unlimited sites, unlimited requests, unlimited bandwidth. Um, who else than Cloudflare would able to provide that, right? Yeah, so that's if you manage point. your uh, your domains already on Cloudflare, or maybe even your emails, um, 
chances are pretty uh, pretty high that you would like Cloudflare pages for your static website setup. Mm. So, yeah, nice. I just wanted to mention it. There are a lot of different providers. There's also Versal, which has also a pretty decent uh, free tier. Um, you can't go wrong with any of them. All of them are big companies and uh, it's a pretty solid service. And it's the whole reason because we, uh, why we're covering GitHub and not like AWS exports because you can immediately launch your static website on all of these providers because of the GitHub integration. So what we've done is we've installed the, or you did, you in, you had a website, you installed the um, the plugin, the Simply Static plugin. That now has been scraping all of the sites and building a database of everything that's on that website. It then gets pushed to GitHub, which is the repository for it, which is now going to combine with, well, in this case, Netlify, Netlify, but it could have been um, Cloudflare Pages, it could have been Versal or a multitude of other providers. But GitHub, if you like, is the is the the, the bit in between. WordPress website, yeah. which you can switch off, chuck it all to GitHub, which is going to stay on all the time, and then chuck it all from GitHub over to, in this case, Netlify. I get it. Yeah. So that's pretty much the the most amazing feature in Simply Static, uh, if I if I get to say that. So um, it's was quite hard to to get that uh, to get that um, to make that possible because like there isn't really so much documentation if you go really deep into how GitHub works. So the integration itself is also insanely complex because we going all the way down to the internals of Git. It's not like a simple API request. Hey, here's a file. Push it to this repository and you're done. So there's a lot of... If you ever want to check it out, feel free to read the code or check the GitHub documentation, um, the part with the GitHub database uh, interaction. And you are offered a whole new nerdy world of how Git <laughs> on your computer and how GitHub and GitLab and all these services work. So it's like amazing. We're talking really about zero and ones. Um, yeah. We pass everything down to like a binary code and combine it again and doing uh, encryption and decryption and all that heavy stuff. It's like amazing. It's a dream for nerds, but you don't have to know it. It's completely fine if you're <laughs> not that amazed uh, about this whole encryption thing and so on. So, yeah, let's check it out here in a second. <sighs> I was hoping the GitHub uh, API was a little bit um, a little bit faster today. But... Oh, does it sometimes does it sometimes behave in a sort of slower way? That's yeah. interesting because when I was experimenting with with your plugin, I I literally I probably clicked generate oh, I don't know, maybe maybe 50 times and it, it was a it was a website which had like i used a, a faker press to create a, just a bunch of fake posts i think there were like 100 posts or something like that typically it took about uh, less than less than 30 seconds to complete the whole process of scraping the files and then the mm. whole pushing them to github took about 10 seconds once i'd done the initial one because yeah. obviously the first time you do it it's got to send everything that way. And that's, then... that's the point, right? We have yeah. a, like a completely new um, new repository here. So GitHub has to set up everything as a repository entry, um, push all the files, um, doing all kinds of encryption to uh, generate these hashes we that we can later compare. Um, so the initial push is always a little bit slower than the updates later. Right. Um, and then subsequent updates is just a diff of what's changed since the last time. Yeah. And so if you've literally changed one page and altered one word, it's going to only need that page. But I, I think there might be a difference there in the way that the plugin works, whether you've got free or pro. I'm not sure. Could be could be wrong about that. Mm, if you uh, if you're using the free version, I mean the GitHub deployment is part of the pro version, but um, the technology approach is the same. So if you run an export to, let's say, a local directory and 
the process is finished. And the next time you run a run generate, it will automatically check the time step of the file. And if um, it compares like a, a hash for the file. So if the Got hash it. has the same is the same size and has the same content, we simply skip that file Ignore, and right, move right, on to right. the next. Got and it. so it's the same approach we're using with GitHub. Uh, we compare like a hash. A hash is like a encrypted long string. And if you change something, this hash will change. And this will um, let GitHub know that this file has modified and needs needs to be updated on the GitHub repository. Um, so, right. yeah. I see. So once you've done it this first time, which is taking a bit longer than you were anticipating, each subsequent change after that is, it, it's much, 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 much quicker. It's it's yeah. a matter of it's moments. It's also frankly. today, yeah. uh, I noticed that earlier today as I was testing um, everything, um, you kind of need to keep in mind that we are working with different APIs and especially the GitHub API is used since like this whole open AI thing and GitHub Copilot and everything running on github.com. Um, this API is used like millions and billions of times per day, right? So right. it can always be like, we might just hit, I mean, if we check like we have all the, um, our API rate limit is like, pretty much unused. So we are only committed like 45 files or so already. Um, and it, it kind of depends on the uh, on the ecosystem, right? So yeah. if you have like, if you export to a local directory, for sure it's fast, right? But GitHub is often almost as fast as a local export. It kind of depends on which time you're exporting and if there is something happening uh, with GitHub. Maybe a service is down, or they had to struggle the request because of uh, like a DDoS attack, or right. So there are so many factors coming in place. Um, oh, that's interesting because I I was playing with it every every time I played with it, it was in the evenings. So you know it was like nine p.m. or something yeah. in the UK. So probably this this part of the world, at least anyway, was probably quite quite quiet. Whether or not North America was, and I don't really know if that matters, but it was definitely a quiet time for me. So are you able to see where this is at? Does it give you a? Does it give you a? Um, will it give you real time information about what it's what it's received already, or does it all happen all at once when it's finished? How does Simply Static handle that? Mm, we have like this indicator here. So we have mm -hmm. one hundred twenty pages files. So we're not differentiating between like the HTML page and images and so on. Um, what you can also do is go to advanced and wait a second where's the ah here yeah here's a little toggle <laughs> um where you can enable the debugging mode if you save that and you go back to activity log quickly refreshing the page here Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Always the same when you do a live. Just, demo. just in case uh, it's completely out of service right now. I prepared a little. We have done exactly oh, you the are, same yesterday. The That's so how you do it. We can, um, we can actually proceed with with our little tutorial here. Um, this things like that happen, right? So what yeah. I would usually do is simply cancel the export and uh, start it again in a couple of minutes. But I don't want to have like everyone waiting for me to run the export right now. So I have prepared yesterday this little WPLs demo. Is that basically the same site where you you click it's the button? Exactly but, the same website. I, okay, but um, it just it just succeeded. Everything was normal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. and it was also done in like thirty five seconds compared to like yeah. A that of honestly, that's my already, experience. Right? That that is that is quirky. So just. And then now it's finished, look. I, I canceled the job now. Oh, I see. So you like, did that. Yeah. Okay. I was going to yeah. say. It's also <laughs> mentioned here in the activity log. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see you yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. So Okay. So let's imagine that we were, this time yesterday, uh, videoing this. You click the button. It worked as expected. 35 seconds or whatever went past. That is my experience. I can hand on heart tell you that's the case. And um, so we're going to carry on as if that were the case. All right. Yeah. 
So once the export finished, you will notice that all the files here are converted to HTML. So if you open like the index.html file, which is usually usually your homepage, you will notice that's the exact same code you will see if you inspect the source code of your WordPress website. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You have all your Yoast SEO meta tags and so on and so forth. And yeah, it basically exported every website it could find, even like category pages, feeds. So if you have like an XML feed for um, your blogs, uh, for your blog, you can still use it as well. We all, always um, export for each post. We also export the XML feed or the RSS feed. Um, so oh, nice. yeah. if you have a blog and uh, you publish your RSS feed, um, or even if you have like a podcast or so, um, you can still use Simply Static to to manage your website as we cover everything for you and also replace all the links within their RSS feed accordingly. Okay. So yeah, you get all your pages, your XML sitemaps. Um, we can also take a look at WP contents. So you have your uploads directory. Oh, okay. Yeah, all yeah, the images yep. we have yep. uploaded in WordPress. Um, there's also an additional folder called Simply Static, and within it, we have like a little configs directory that will be important for the next sessions. It's okay. basically configuration files to make forms and search work on your static website. Um, so I just wanted to show you that there are some additional files involved to make all the magic happen here. Okay. Um, all right, WP's demo. Um, ah, one thing I wanted to uh, wanted to show you is. Um, it's kind of technical, but you have like a basic backup system when you use GitHub. Right. You so do. you see there are 11 commits that I've done, all this uh, for testing and preparation for our live stream today. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will notice I made an export on the 19th of July, 18th of July, and you get all these snapshots. And if you click on one of them, you get your entire website at that particular state of the export. So you have like a huge backlog and an unlimited number of backups um, from all the times you exported a new static version from your website within GitHub hosted for free. Nice. So if you ever want to re revert anything, you can simply swap it in GitHub and run a new export. But there's also, and we're getting to it in a second, a simpler way to do that in Netlify, for example. For, for some example, reason there, um, Patrick, your microphone is just this moment. It's gone back to the uh, the weird, probably the AirPods. So just go back into the settings and make sure it's back on the um, the good mic. Hello, hello. Not yet. Yeah, e even yeah, worse. No, you're, back, uh, you're back, you're back, you're back. Yeah, even worse, it uh, switched to the... MacBook Pro internal yeah, microphone, which is like all the oh, way there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, funny enough. <laughs> One time we were doing a live stream and everything has gone crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So we have our little um, repository right here. Um, we already talked about Netlify and how it's insanely cheap for static WordPress hosting. And also, for sure, the account is for free. So sign up. And once you sign up, you land in your dashboard. That's the screen you're seeing right now. And it's pretty nerdy. And you don't have to use the dark mode, but I just love dark modes yeah. uh, on websites. So <laughs> yeah. it's enabled by default on all of the websites I'm using. Um, it's all like there are a lot of things happening here and a lot of configuration, but don't get too confused. There's only one single button that is important to you right now, and that is add new site. Got it. If you click on it, you can decide if you want to import an existing project, start from a template, or deploy manually. Deploy manually, uh, Nathan already tried that a couple of times, is like dropping the zip file from Simply Static into Netlify and it automatic, automatically uh, deploys your website on a temporary domain. That's not what we're doing right now because we would need to re-upload the zip file every time you want to change something. Right, right. And we have uh, set up GitHub now to completely automate the entire process. So if you click on import an existing project, um, you have a couple of options. 
Um, you probably have never heard of GitLab or Etsy DevOps. So we deploy with GitHub for sure. And if you click on it, it will authorize and it will show your account with all the existing repositories you have. So in our case, we are looking for WP, WP builds demo. That's the repository. Yes, that was the one. Yeah, yeah. We're back to that one. Got it. Yeah. So WP's demo. There are a couple of additional settings. Um, you have to select, or you don't have to select a branch because Simply Static has already selected that for you. That's why I said, like, leave it to the default and you are completely good to go. Um, yep. There are a couple of settings here, but none of them are really interesting for us. So you can scroll all the way to the bottom and just click deploy WP's. WP builds demo and it will start running. So as you can see, we get a temporary domain name and there's a little status progress here, site deploying progress, deploys from GitHub, started and uh, almost, is it? Oh, it's we're already an hour in. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing <laughs> how fast things move. <laughs> so, okay, we uh, the deployment is finished. So we get a little temporary URL from Netlify right here. If you check that out, you will notice it looks kind of familiar to the yeah, we uh, know this site. to the yeah, static we've website that. we've yeah. seen already. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you have your static website deployed via GitHub to Netlify, and each time something in the GitHub repository changes, uh, it will automatically update this whole process. What we are doing right now, because the process is still not finished. We cancel that right back here. You're and gonna have to reconnect your API key, aren't you, to be the- um, We can use one. the same, uh, we can use a new API Oh, because it's for your GitHub account, but it's, yeah. You, you, yeah, you need to go back to demo, don't you? There. The you only go. thing we have to change is the repository. Yeah, that's helpful. And yeah. hopefully the GitHub API is a little bit more friendly to us right now. What we're doing now is instead of pushing an entire update, we're just updating a page. Um, we have, uh, with Simply Static Pro, I have to mention it, that's a Simply Static Pro feature. So if you have the free version, you can always run a full static export. But if you have Simply Static Pro, there are some kind of convenient features. One of them is single exports. So if you edit a post, um, we have this little travel so, post here. So the pro version allows you to just push one page as opposed to yeah. the whole thing. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah. It's just a little bit quicker. There's also yeah. like an, another um, export option called builds. Builds are basically, we get, to back, we get back to that in a second, but uh, for now we're just looking into single exports. So you edit your page, post, custom post type, product, whatever. Um, and you will notice there's a little meta box here. Yes, also, if you're using the, uh, the block editor, there's also an export button right at the top. But oh, if yeah, you're a fan yeah. of the classic editor, you always have like this traditional meta box on the right hand side of the screen. And you can click the export static page button to export just a single page. You can also specifically include all assets that are, um, that are part of that particular page. That can make sense if you have like, you have a single landing page and you only want to export that particular landing page, for example, for like a promotion on a different domain or if you have like AdWords landing pages or yeah. anything you can think of. So if you don't want to make your entire website static, just include the assets and you're good to go. Export the page you want and it will look exactly like this page but it will not include like your home page and all of your other Oh, right. Oh, that's fascinating. That's a really interesting use case. Yeah, One just, thing that we introduced yeah. right now in Simply Static 3.0 or uh, 1.4 if you count the version number of Simply Static Pro. So that is new, but was highly requested. And even if I'm a huge advocate for going entirely static with your website, I kind of can understand that there, are, that there are use cases where you just want to export like one particular page. So uh, just, just that, to say, Danny, yeah. we've got a question from Danny, but we'll deal with that at the end if that's all right. Thank, stay tuned, Danny. All right. Yeah. So if you click on export static page, there's a little loading indication here. Um, 
And yeah, that's pretty much it. If we check the repository now, you will notice that quickly, what was it? Finding inspiration in a desolated island. So we are in block. Where's it? Ah, no, it was not block. It's what travel, travel lock. So travel lock. And finding that expression one. it is. Yeah, right. So what you will notice, and that was on purpose, <laughs> um, <laughs> you will notice, oh, nothing changed. Well, as we already mentioned, if nothing changes on your page, Simply Static will not update this particular article or image or page or whatever you exported on GitHub. It will only oh. update the page if something changed. So How even, do we if do you, that? even if you we like hit that button a thousand times, if you yeah. haven't changed anything, it's just gonna I'm ignoring you. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's it's, good. It's basically like a little security feature built in. Yeah. yeah. Um because if you're not working alone on your WordPress website, let's say you have like uh, some content writers publishing articles, reviewing, changing something, we don't want to um want to eliminate all of your API requests because we have like 5,000 API requests per hour with GitHub for free. And we don't want to burn them by simply publishing each time someone yeah, updates just the same or exports thing. a static right, page right. if nothing changes. So That's if you change idea. something, let's say we're... Maybe something a little bit more obvious. <laughs> so we changed something we update the page um, and we export again and we hope that the uh, GitHub API, yeah, GitHub API isn't killing isn't us being, right now yeah, there's nothing we can do about that <laughs> you can you also if you run an export and you check the activity log in um, in Simply Static and uh, we are still running. Yeah, we're still it. we're still stuck on the previous one, aren't we? Okay, let's quickly do it again. Desolated island. Checking back. Simply static. Activity lock. So let's see. Come on, GitHub. Come on, GitHub. Everybody, pray for GitHub. There's nothing you can do about it. If GitHub's not going to behave, it's not your fault. Let's see if it's changed over there, though. Has it picked it up? That's the question. No. You have to go and inspect the HTML. It doesn't look good. Oh, something's finished. But it there you go. updated. How long does it take for the connection between? I mean, that should be more or less now, right? As soon as it's updated and you've got that confirmation in the Simply Static plugin, we should see the changes over here. Yeah, so there's no delay. Um, the uh, activity log is kind of live, which is good and bad. So it's good in terms of if it's committed here, it's already, we, al we always verify that the file exists on GitHub. So if it's committed here, it's always on GitHub. Right, the problem it. is if you're uh, ever running a live stream, and uh, you're talking about running a static site setup with like GitHub integration, you can't really fake anything because if it's stuck here, it's also stuck on GitHub. But yeah. I'm kind of glad it gone through and we will already see one minute ago that it updated a couple of pages. So Yeah, so it's the category of travel and the page yeah. is the finding inspiration one. Nice. So it updated more than you might have thought of in the first moment. Oh, yeah, but if, you look, think, yeah. if you think about it, we made it, we try to be, yeah, we try to be clever. So if you hit an update on a single post, for example, Simply Static knows, okay, the user wants to update this, this particular page or this particular post, but it's not everything we uh, we have to update because a post belongs to a category a post belongs to a tag a post or you always have like a blog page uh, in wordpress 
and you may have like an article teaser on your homepage. Yeah. So it would be like a huge task for the user or for pretty much everyone if you would need to think of all the locations where this post might be embedded or should be updated. Um, that's why we highly automated the Singer exports. So it if does you look run like Singer it's export, on the homepage, doesn't it, as well? Because index has changed down at the bottom yeah. there. Yeah. Because we have this little, there's a little. Uh, there. One here. of those. Here. There it is. We have, we have it embedded here. And Simply Static will know that. Simply Static will check for all the different metadata attached to the post. That um, so we combine categories, text, the blog page, the home page, um, images. So if the Im image has changed, um, the timestamp from the last export for that particular image file will also change. And we update it. Uh, think of you cropped an image or you replaced an entire image because the old one was kind of ugly and not match the, the blog post, for example. So we try to automate as much as possible to make it as easy as possible for everyone to quickly update the static website without too much effort um, needed to, to make sure everything is exported. There's also, if you really want to go crazy, there's an additional option that you combine, can combine with single exports, um, which is called builds. Builds are basically a WordPress taxonomy similar to categories, but with superpower. So you can create a build and you can assign builds to posts, pages, and products, whatever custom post type you have. And if you do that, we just... <laughs> the build is WP build. The build. WP build. build. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so you can create a build. You can also add additional URLs and additional files, particularly for that specific build. Nice. We're not going to do that, but it's like, if you have, let's say, one problem you may be facing when you're running a static website is you want to export a single post, but you build this tiny little CSS fix where you change the button color. And usually what you would need to do is updating your whole static website to update the, the style CSS file. What you can do with builds is combining pages, posts, everything, and also additional files. So you can uh, just add the path to your style.css file from your theme and just update that alongside the article you just wrote or updated or whatsoever. Got it. Yeah. Oh, that's so neat. It, that's a neat yeah. feature. I like that. It's just like the, the middle step between I just need a single export yeah. And I want to run a complete update because I changed the theme or anything, right? So, so Patrick, you know that you've been, you, we've been watching GitHub closely. Um, we've been checking to see that those changes went over to GitHub. What's Netlify doing at the minute? Is Netlify I, then, is then, is it, you, you, we're in a different spot now, aren't we? Presumably you've got to go back to yesterday's demo one. But is Netlify just silently in the background constantly saying, has anything changed on GitHub? Has anything changed on GitHub? Ah, something's changed on GitHub. Let's deal with that. Yeah. So we have it right here. Um, as you can see, we published. So we run our export and we published a couple of files yep. and pushed them over to GitHub. And Netlify will automatically listen for all changes that happen on GitHub. So you don't have to click any button or anything to update your static website as long as you maintain um, all the changes on GitHub. As you can see right here, we pushed um, the initial export um, here and mm -hmm. that's the updated one. So a couple oh, yeah, minutes that's later, right. yeah. Yeah. that's from yeah. the uh, single export we've done right now. And okay. you can see is everything is already done. It's uh, You also can check like there's a temporary domain that you can use, but you can also just refresh your static website. And Here's as you text. might there remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. we changed the word land to island. I, we did, and we changed. We added another text at the beginning as well. Yes. And here's another text. <clears throat> so we worked quite hard to make it as easy as possible and automate as much as possible. So if you know how to 
work with WordPress. Uh, by the way, this also, as you already mentioned, works completely from your local computer. So your WordPress website doesn't even need to be in the internet. You can just use local WP and do the exact same things we've done right now. Um, so publish your articles from your local computer to the whole world um, through GitHub and automatically deploy it as a static website. Um, although, although we we had a few technical gremlins today, I've got to say that the, I never had any of these hand on heart, promise, promise. I just never had that. It, it was immediate. My first deploy up to GitHub took a, a, a minute or something along those lines. It was about 100 pages. Every page had some sort of fake image, blah, blah, blah. It was all about a minute. After that, it took about 10 seconds to create, to generate the new file. I was using the free version, so it had to generate the entire site. So in theory, that was an even longer process, but it still only took a matter of seconds. I think the longest I ever saw was about 22 seconds, something like that. And then I had to, I pushed it to GitHub, which was easy to do, um, that was fine. And then the process of getting GitHub, or I didn't do anything, but GitHub to be, or sorry, Netlify to figure out that something had changed that was the longest bit that was maybe 30 seconds so sometimes after i'd clicked push to github I, d I don't know in the length of time it took me to tie my shoelaces it was live and it just yeah. worked and i never had any problems so i'm sorry that you had technical gremlins today <laughs> it's just absolutely guaranteed isn't it when you do something live <laughs> yeah i mean I already knew something like that would happen. So that's why I like prepared the repository, yeah. for example, because I had a couple of issues. It's kind of random because last week I prepared our first session here and uh, I tested all different services and GitHub worked absolutely fine. I exported a website with like 10,000 pages and files in about an hour or so. Um, and it worked really perfect. Yeah. And... <laughs> That time, it was another service that had a little downtime. That's why we are not talking about Cloudflare Pages today. Oh, um, I see. Because Cloudflare <laughs> Pages um, scheduled a maintenance update last week for oh. about two hours, and it was exactly the time window I was testing um, the whole new export thing from GitHub to Cloudflare Pages. Oh, I mean, but yeah. It, it's Be pretty sanguine. rare, right? So it, Cloudflare it Pages does yeah. like an update in two updates in a year or so, but yeah. sometimes, yeah. It's just, it's just rely the way on it, it goes, yeah. yeah. So, what I'm going to say, though, is um, we, in the end, we got there. We succeeded. We're going to be doing, um, we're going to be doing three more shows. So the, the first one that you've, uh, you've just been party to, that was uh, GitHub and static size. It's a sort of foundational piece, really, of how it all works together. Next time, we'll be doing forms. That's going to be on the 26th of July. Um, then we're doing static sites and how search worked. And again, Patrick sort of built up. You could see that all of that was in place. And then finally, multilingual. That'll be the fourth date. Uh, that's going to be in, in August at some point. Um, there is an offer if you're interested, if, you've, if you're keen to, uh, to take this further and you want to look at the pro version, Patrick has actually offered a 25% a, a off discount code. If you go to simplystatic.com, there you go, simplystatic.com, um, and use the offer code WPBuilds. He's going to give you 25% off for that, which is really nice. And, um, yeah, so we'll be back back next time. Before that, though, there's a couple of things that came into the uh, live chat, which we should probably mention. Yeah. Firstly, Let's thank get you to the, the people. Yeah, thanks to the people who showed up. So, hello, Elliot. That's nice for you to come along. Igor, uh, do you you know Igor, do you, Patrick? He, he sort of made a comment which implied that he's not biased at all. I wondered if he was uh, like a colleague uh, he of is yours. Absolutely, Igor is absolutely biased at all. Okay. Igor helped with the latest update, and Igor oh, nice. also built like this little terminal view uh, we have seen here right now. Igor is the man. Uh, yeah, well, thank so. you, Igor. You've been <laughs> helping out with the nice. questions as well. That's really great. Ben Intel's joining us from the Philippines, which means it's very late. He's got two kids, so thanks for thanks for making the effort, Ben. Appreciate yeah, it. So, absolutely. okay, here we go. Uh, Danny Baird has a question, and he says, "Stupid question. Um, what is the difference between static and headless? Well, there is a vast difference. Um, can it be both? What's the advantage of one versus the other? So, Patrick, over to you. Yeah. So, um. 
it can be both, but there's a huge difference in the approach of static and headless. So static is uh, from the base idea. Um, you have an existing WordPress website and you don't want to change or you, you can't code or you don't want to code and you want your existing website with your theme, your plugins and so on statified and hosted on a static hosting provider. Headless is more like maintaining an active connection between your WordPress backend and your frontend. Usually uh, you use something like React or um Vue.js or so, some kind of fancy JavaScript framework to rebuild your entire front-end facing website and use the WordPress REST API to fetch the content and update it and so on. So it's yeah. like static is for content websites and it's for um, pretty much anything that doesn't that isn't highly dynamic. But if you need something really dynamic and you don't want to go with traditional WordPress, then a combination between static and headless would work. Um, think of e-commerce, WooCommerce, for example. WooCommerce would require some kind of headless approach if being used on a static website setup. Thank you. He had a follow-up, well, not a follow-up question. He had a, a further question, which was, um, can you chat about the types of content and scripts and plugins that may not play nicely with static sites. We've kind of alluded a little bit to search and forms, but maybe there's more than that that you yeah. want to get. So I would exclude everything that is highly dynamic. Um, the most popular uh, things are WooCommerce, uh, yeah. because you yeah. can't maintain like you can't maintain the card, for example, because there's no server to store the card session. So the next time you switch the page, your card would be gone. Um, the same is um, everything related to membership websites. Right. Where LMSs, to, all um, that, yeah. Uh, where you have to change the content based on the current user that is logged in. Um, that is kind of tricky. There are solutions to make that happen. But if, you, if we go with like traditional static, um, that's something that pretty much not work. Um, well, the, the, the two words are polar opposites, aren't they? Static, dynamic, they couldn't be more different. So if you've got really seriously dynamic content like shopping carts and things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's there's gonna be there's gonna be things that you need to explore. So I mean, there are alternatives to uh, headless alternatives yep. or yep. static alternatives to things like WooCommerce, but I mean WooCommerce is really big and really common. I can totally understand why people are asking for WooCommerce instead of like some software as a service solution like yeah. Shopify, for example. Right, so right, there right. are a lot of benefits of running with WooCommerce instead of yeah. like a software as a service solution. But looks in like traditional Igor... static setup, that wouldn't work. Yeah, looks like Igor got in there. Thank you, Igor. Uh, he explained as follows. Headless usually requires connection with a WP site as it still pulls data from the server. Static is just static in most cases, just the three things, HTML, JavaScript and a bit of CSS. I don't know if this is a question because I haven't read this one yet. It was below the fold for me. For instance, we used to, so this is Danny again. We used to host a, uh, we used a host that provided static publishing and they had to do certain workarounds, even providing their own versions of certain plugins such as Croco block. Okay, that's interesting. So that was just a comment. Um, and then Amit joining us. Hello, Amit. Thank you for your super simple walkthrough. Just one question. I saw a search box on homepage after exporting to static. Will the search functionality work? Let's see it working. And then, uh, and then the answer is, uh, Amit, come back. Uh, come back in a couple of weeks. We're going to have an episode called um, "How Does Search Work on Your Static Site?" <laughs> so that'll be the the way to do it. But look, there it is working. Great. Yeah. So I don't want to spoil it too much, but yeah, yeah. Search works. There are different ways to make that work, and you don't even need uh, any additional plugin or so because we uh, all you have to do is like adding the uh, tag that is used for your search uh, element. And simply static will handle the rest for you. And yeah. we have different kind of uh, options. Some for like um, having everything local, so you don't have to connect with any external API and just run it from your static website. Oh. Um, and we have, if you need something a little bit more fancy, more advanced, we also have an integration with Algolia. Algolia, to make yeah, yeah. A really crazy search implementation with all right. kinds of fuzzy logic filters yeah. and so on. 
do anything you like with that. Okay, so yeah. the answer is yes. But if you want the details, uh, Amit, please come back. Next week, we're going to be dealing with forms. Week after that, we'll be dealing with, as I've just said, um, search. search. And then we're going to have a week off. And then we'll come back and deal with multilingual. And Amit, uh, sorry, Igor says... Uh, so, so he's answering the question again. Thank you, Igor. Very helpful. Search works, but not in a regular dynamic way. Not pinging the WP site. Pages are indexed into JavaScript. Provides a search autocomplete function. Uh, and exactly what he's literally said what you said. Uh, yeah. Another way is to use the Algolia service. I, I already that. instructed him to uh, <laughs> yes, all the questions things. for me. Yeah, yeah. So my uh, AI double can take over from now. Oh, on. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then finally, um, I'm it's back. Cool. Surely I'll wait for further episodes. Quite helpful. No problem. So this one has, we had a few technical gremlins, but hopefully you've been, your, your curiosity has been piqued. Head to uh, simplystatic.com to find out more. Um, Patrick, in case people watch this content between now and next, next week, what is a good way of contacting you? Would it just be through the Simply Static contact form or do you use Twitter or email? What's what's the best? Yeah, so simplystatic.com uh, is a good place to start in case of if you need any kind of help or have additional technical questions that uh, might need a little might a little bit more explanation from my side. So you can also reach out at Twitter. It's Patrick Prosner underscore. Um, if you have like simpler questions or just want to connect or chat or whatever, um, find me on Twitter. I'm always happy to engage with all the folks talking about static websites. Um, yeah. So Great. that's pretty much it. Well, honestly, thank you. I have thoroughly enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys have as well. We're going to be back, um, like I said, in a week's time. So we'll see you then. Thank you, Patrick. Really appreciate it.